Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simiou, and this is the preview show back after the festive season where our show schedule took a little bit of a different direction. Uh, But of course, we will now be getting back to normal. The holidays are well and truly behind us uh, and we've got the rest of the season to look forward to. So we will be focusing on that big clash at the London Stadium this coming Saturday. But... This preview show has been somewhat hijacked by an extraordinary press conference that Unai Emery took part in earlier on in the day, um, where he delivered some bad news, should I say, uh, to those of us hoping for Arsenal to bring in some recruits during this transfer window. So uh, I'm going to play you a little clip now of what Unai Emery had to say, and then we'll get into that a little bit further. We cannot sack, uh, like uh, doing... Uh, so empowerment with one player in only we can lone player I don't know now his situation but uh, we we can only sign players like Alon and I know the club is, is working for the possibility <laughs> who player can help us uh, with this condition first with a big performance like we, we need now the club is is, is telling me uh, each moment, different situation can can uh, happen for for one recruitment. But at the moment, uh, I I haven't uh, very on, on new new news today about that. So there will not be any funds available for a permanent transfer during this transfer window. Absolutely shocking news to come out of the uh, the press conference today. It's completely rocked our fan base once again. Uh, you know, many of us hoped that this new uh, regime would back the manager and, and hoped that, of course, we would get the players in that we need. Um, you know what? After the Liverpool game, after the Liverpool defeat, I did say that I was fearful of this happening. I was fearful of the board uh, not backing Unai Emery, the club not backing him. Stan Kroenke continuing to refuse to put his hands in his pocket and help this club out and help this club to succeed and, and push on further. He's a businessman that's happy with the way things are going. It's a self-sustaining model. And, you know, he doesn't really care if we get success or not. All he cares about is balancing the books and and taking a little bit of profit for himself at the end of every year. And it's, you know, it's, it's... it's one of those things, isn't it, where you kind of expected it, but that doesn't mean you're any less angry when you finally hear it. I mean, you know, people talk about Arsenal being the sixth richest club in the world, but we can't afford to sign a player. It's pathetic. It's ridiculous. Uh, Unai Emery spoke of the fact that we can only look at loan deals. I mean, we're not a mid-table to bottom of the Premier League club looking to wheel and deal their way out of trouble uh, during the difficult transfer window. It's, it's appalling. Um and, you know, yes, you could look at Arsene Wenger and Ivan Gazidis' part in this and say that they signed a number of players who, who weren't good enough, weren't up to scratch, uh, tied them down to long contracts, which has ultimately shot us in the foot. But this ultimately stems, doesn't it, from Stan Kroenke not being ambitious. And he's never going to be ambitious, is he? Because he doesn't care about this football club and he needs to go. I, I don't know how we're going to do it. Um, and in many ways, you know, you you kind of think that it's impossible. But Stan Kroenke is a cancer on this football club. He's draining money out of us left, right and centre. We saw the report the other day, didn't we? I think it was last week. Uh, that highlighted the fact that he'd not put any money from his own pocket into the running of the football club. In recent weeks and and months, I've been critical of Unai Emery and I've felt that maybe we haven't progressed as much as I would have liked to have seen us progress. Um, You know, we've not improved defensively. There's still a lot of er uh, issues, sorry, that were there in the past too. But what chance does this poor man stand at getting this right when he's not being backed by the the hierarchy at the club it's pathetic you know people will say Unai Emery needs three or four transfer windows but what good are those transfer windows if he doesn't have any money to spend it makes absolutely no sense you know this afternoon I've received a load of tweets a load of messages from friends and obviously uh, you know followers of the show and stuff and I I welcome all interaction of course but I I was particularly annoyed this afternoon when I read so many people talking about FFP and the fact that 
you know, we're restricted by it and Arsenal need to abide by it because they don't want to get a massive fine like certain other clubs have had. Um, I think Manchester City have had one. But the, the thing is, there are ways around FFP. There are plenty of clubs out there whose books are in far worse shape than Arsenal's and they manage to get around it. So what? They pay a fine for, from time to time and they, you know, it's, it's like buying another player, isn't it? It's chump change to clubs like Manchester City and people need to wake up and realise that there is no issue with FFP at Arsenal. It's just a bullshit narrative that the club have put out uh, to try and pull the wool over our eyes again. And if you're falling for that, I think personally you need to take a long, hard look at yourself because, you know, this club that wants to be self-sustaining and and wants to compete at the highest level and do things the right way is nothing but a cash cow for an American businessman who is is milking us dry, bleeding us dry in order to fund a load of NFL teams, uh, baseball teams, whatever it is that he owns. To be quite frank, I don't really care. All I care about is Arsenal Football Club and, and we're on the decline at the moment. And this, you know, should be a call to the fans to to take action, you know, to protest against this because it's absolute nonsense. I'm sorry, a club of Arsenal's size, the sixth richest club in the world, and we cannot buy a player this January to help us try and achieve our ambitions of getting back in the Champions League. It's not acceptable. It's all just one big mess, isn't it? We're in a situation now where we've got Mesut Ozil at the club, a player who I I rate, actually, and I think has got bags of ability. And, and if he's used in the right way, I think he can be a real asset to this team. But we're paying him in excess of £300,000 a week to sit on the bench because the manager doesn't really fancy him. Well, a club in the financial mess that we're in at the moment can't do that. You you can't do that. You know, as a result of this, we've had to let Aaron Ramsey go. We've pulled a contract offer from him for whatever reason. There's people out there that say, you know, the club were pissed off with him in the way he went about uh, or his agents went about touting him off to other teams. Uh, and so they didn't believe that he knew nothing about it. And they ultimately pulled the plug. Fine. You know, there could be more to that. I don't know. I'm not in the know. I don't pretend to be. Um, but you know, we, we've lost a player to Juventus and, you know, you can say what you like about Aaron Ramsey, but if he was shit, Juventus wouldn't be interested. And that's a fact. You know, Juventus have taken two players off us now, uh, Wojciech Szczesny um, and, of course, Aaron Ramsey's on his way there. And what, for a combined fee of £13 million or something like that? It's, it's bad business from Arsenal. You know, you can talk about us being a well-run club. We're not a well-run club at all. We've got players on our books who shouldn't be on our books. We've paying out wages to players who hardly contribute to the team. You know, we're stuck with a load of players like, just to pick an example, Mohamed Elneny, whose value probably hasn't risen in the time he's been with Arsenal. Um, you know, we've got players like Shkodran Mustafi, who we paid 35-odd million for. He's not even worth half of that now. Um, you know, players like said Kalasinac, who is a great wing back, but is he top, top level? Not in my opinion. Um, you know, Arsenal spent a little bit of money in the past two seasons, but please don't forget that a lot of that was off the back of big sales, wasn't it? You know, we bought a Bamiyang, but we sold Oxley chamberlain for 35 odd million. So there was only really a, a 20 odd million investment there. And, and people forget that. People seem to think that this board were helping. They were splashing the cash. They never, ever were. It was all off the back of sales. And, and the more this goes on and the longer this goes on for, the more you realise that Arsene Wenger's hands were tied at times. Um, not so much towards the end. He got a little bit of backing towards the end and he did spend the money that he did get badly. I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm not denying that in any way. But what I will say is, for the years previous, you know, previous to that, where Arsene Wenger was coming under fire for allowing players to leave the club, um, and not extending people's contracts, not meeting their wage demands. This is a problem that stems from the very top. That problem was not eradicated when Arsene Wenger left. That problem will always be there for as long as Stan Kroenke is in charge of this football club and he's on his way to becoming a sole owner of this club and God help us, you know, over the next few years. I'm really, really angry, really pissed off, really worried for the future of our club and the longer we're out of the Champions League, the harder it is to get back in it 
And, you know, without the investment, that's simply not going to happen. So stand cronky, put your hands in your pocket, you know, put your money where your mouth is. And at the end of the day, your asset is declining in value because you're refusing to to put money into it. I, I just don't get it. It's bad business for someone who's a, a renowned businessman. It's just awful business. And, you know, I, I know we're in a decent position this season. We wanted to achieve the top four uh, and we are within touching distance of that at the moment. So on the pitch, things are going okay, but there's, you know, you can't sustain that. Can you, you you know, the teams around you will keep spending, will keep bringing in uh, better players and, and, and improving and moving forward. And we'll, we'll continue to stagnate because we just won't make the right investment. We bought some players in, in the summer Maybe with the exception of Lucas Torreira, we were shopping in, in, in bargain hunters, weren't we? We got second-rate players, and from them, you're only going to get second-rate performances. You know, you might be listening to this and thinking it's, it's a bit of an overreaction uh, on my part, but this is not an overreaction. This is something that's been boiling up inside of me for years and years and years, and you kind of hope that when Unai Emery came in and when Raul Sanlehi came in and Ivan Gazidis left... And, and obviously the acquisition of Sven Mislintat, that this might change. This might get better. There'll be, there's a better structure in place. But the buck stops with Stan Kroenke, doesn't it? If he won't invest, then Arsenal will always be limited in what they can do in the transfer market. And therefore, we'll never complete, uh, compete Sorry, with the big boys. We'll never be in the running for the big prizes. And it's just it's heartbreaking as an Arsenal fan, um, an Arsenal fan who grew up in an era of great success, now having to watch a team who, you know, are fighting to get back in the Champions League and probably are going to end up fifth or sixth place come the end of the season. And, and it's all because, you know, we've fallen behind the times. We haven't invested correctly. The, the club's not been run properly. Um, and, you know, it's just disappointing, isn't it? It's all round disappointing. And I'm going to turn my attention to the game on Saturday now because the more I go on about this, the more stressed out I'm getting, I think. So I'm going to focus on some of the other elements of Unai Emery's press conference. I've spoken an awful lot about transfers. Just before I move on from that, um, I'm going to touch on what he said uh, regarding Denis Suarez, a player who's been strongly linked with a move to Arsenal uh, in recent weeks. And Unai had this to say. He said, I don't know his situation now. We can only sign players later on. I know the club is working on possibilities of which players can help us with big performances like we need now. He was also asked asked a question about Eva Benega, uh, a former player of his, and he had this to say, I know this player and he's a very good player. I cannot tell you more. Unai Emery's input in regards to transfers was also questioned in the press conference and he responded with, I can say to you that the club is working. The club is telling me the different situations in each moment. At the moment, we haven't had any news today about that. Um, I think he's avoided the question there. Perhaps he's not understood it uh, completely. Now, moving on to the team news for the West Ham clash. Uh, he did confirm that Mustafi, Monreal, Bellerin and Ozil were all training uh, with the team. They'd all taken part in training and, and the only injury concerns were were those of Danny Welbeck and, of course, Rob Holding, which are more long term. Uh, he confirmed that Mkhitaryan's back training and also Mavropanos, a player who's been missing for most of the season, um, and, you know, we could have certainly done with when we were struggling to to put two centre-backs on the pitch. Uh, so Unai Emery spoken about them helping us out um, and that some of them can start playing with the under-23s in order to get their, their match fitness up to where it needs to be. Um, and he, he ended by saying, at the moment, we are better than we were a week ago. So some positive news on that front. And, and hopefully, you know, we can start to pick up results again um, and, and string together another really decent run and hope that that's enough to, to scrape into the top four. He was also asked about Manuel Pellegrini um, and Unai Emery responded uh, with the utmost respect for, for the Chilean manager uh, by saying he's a very good coach with a lot of experience and he's won the Premier League with Manchester City. I know he needs time to create his ideas with this team. Um, so, you know, of course, that is... Uh, uh, 
complimentary of Pellegrini, isn't it? Sort of buying his, his mate some time. Um, he, he went on to say that I think they're improving and they also have good individual players with quality like Anderson and Arnautovic. Um, and he went on to talk about the fact that they're playing at home on Saturday and that will be difficult for us. Looking a little bit more closely at West Ham and how they fared so far this season, uh, they currently sit in 10th place. They've won eight, uh, drawn four and lost nine. They've scored 29 goals in the process and conceded 32. They've only actually won two of their last five. Um, so they're not in the greatest run of form at the moment, but they have really got some dangerous players and and. As Unai Emery highlighted, you know, Marco Arnautovic is one of those. And of course, uh, Felipe Anderson is another. And, and I think if I'm not mistaken, he's their top scorer at the moment. He's been a massive addition to that team. He came for a hefty fee from Lazio, but he's been worth the money so far, you have to say. Um, and I thought earlier on in the season, I think it was our third game of the season. It was certainly our first home game, um, you know, West Ham came to the Emirates and they played really, really well, particularly in the first half. They caused us all sorts of problems. And, and to be quite frank, our defence hasn't improved a great deal since then, has it? Um, I thought they were really clever in the way they they played against us. Um, if I remember correctly, Pellegrini deployed Antonio as a wing back, uh, but also Felipe Anderson was, was pulling out to West Ham's left, Arsenal's right, in order to expose the space that Hector Bellerin was leaving uh, because he was forever getting getting forward no fault of his own that's what he's instructed to do but there that does leave us in, in a bit of a sticky situation in that position and Felipe Anderson is a good enough player to get in those positions and really really hurt you um you know they have got some some real uh, attacking threat in him and of course Arnautovic and you know Javier Hernandez chips in with goals here and there too doesn't he he's a very much a box player um and you know Arsenal's defense always worries me um, and so, you know, you you got to feel that if West Ham uh, exp- uh, hit the right areas, I would say, if West Ham focus on the right areas of the pitch, they can really, really hurt us. So this is by no means an easy game. And my prediction here is actually a draw. I don't fancy Arsenal to go and win there. Um, you know, there'll be a cracking atmosphere at the London Stadium. Um, you know, I know a lot of people complain about the ground and talk about how far the fans are away from the pitch. But, you know, I, I know a couple of West Ham fans who go there every week and I think it's growing on them. I think they're getting used to it. I think the atmosphere for a London derby will always be uh, pretty good. So, you know, I, I don't buy that where, you know, West Ham kind of using the stadium as an excuse for, for not doing well and not achieving their goals. I think that ship sailed. They've just got to get on with it, haven't they? And their owners have, have pumped in quite a bit of money um, in order to make sure that their team is is forever improving. They've chopped and changed managers when necessary. But I believe they've got a really good manager there in Pellegrini and someone who, if they give him the time, if they back him financially, he can take them on to to start challenging in that sort of second league in the Premier League. So you've got the top six, haven't you? And then you've got a little league um, underneath that. And West Ham with the with the right investment. And if they give Pellegrini time, they could end up top of that little mini league just under the elite six. Right, now that brings us to my favourite part of the show, the listener questions. A huge thank you to every single one of you who sent something in today. Um, Unfortunately, I can't go through all of them, but I have picked four here uh, that I'm going to touch on. So uh, big thanks to to all of you and to those whose questions I don't get around to. I do apologise and I'll try and pick those up uh, next week. The first one is from a guy on Twitter called Dro the Gooner. Um, he says, how do we as a club find funds for midfielders, but we can't buy one central defender? Please tell me that two of Hogwarts greats, little Harry Potter reference there, Sven and Raul have a trick up their sleeves. Please tell me that they have some super center back signing lined up this summer. Uh, Dro, my friend, I would like to think that's the case, but I can't see it somehow. I think that's a little bit of wishful thinking on your part. Uh, Thanks for your question, but I can't see it somehow. I just can't. Um, This next one comes from Richard Wright, who often sends questions. Massive thank you, Richard, uh, for your continued support. He says, should we be concerned if we don't buy anyone this window or should we look to promote more youth players? And I think Richard actually submitted this question before the, the press conference took place. Um, 
Well, now we have to face the real possibility that we may not bring anyone in uh, during this transfer window. And, you know, you can talk about promoting youth players from what I've seen. I'm not sure that any of them are ready to step up to the, to the level required. I think for me, looking at Arsenal's sort of youth ranks at the moment and the fringes of the first team, you know, the under-23s and so on and so forth, the player that sticks out for me is Emil Smith-Rowe. But he doesn't play in a position that we're particularly short in at the moment. So, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I, I don't think that when you're talking about defence, I don't think that Zach Medley's quite ready. I think the fact that Unai Emery preferred to play Licksteiner at centre-back at the weekend than him tells you that, you know, maybe he's... Unai Emery shares that opinion that he's not quite ready. Next question comes in from Nick Pouch. Uh, he has two questions, actually. Do you think that Arsenal will ever break the bank and go out and buy the world-class centre-half the club desperately needs, like a Koulibaly or De Ligt? Um, quite frankly, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Arsenal is shopping in that bracket at the moment. And his second question, which kind of follows on, is if we are not back in the UCL within the next three years, do you think Kroenke will change his ways? Uh, sadly, no. I actually think that Stan Kroenke... It is all about letting this club be self-sufficient and and turning a profit for him with minimal investment. So what that means is he doesn't want to put time and effort into it. He doesn't want to, to put money into it. All he cares about is being able to take a little dividend at the end of the year. Um, you know, once the club is fully his, that's what he'll be doing. Um, he doesn't want to answer to anyone and and, you know, he uses Arsenal as a bit of, uh, I would say, as collateral, doesn't he? He uses it to probably secure loans for other things. Um, and it's kind of like an asset that you can draw from as opposed to an asset that's growing in value. It's kind of steady, isn't it? Um, and I think that all that will happen is if we don't get back in the Champions League is our budget will drop even more because you'll need to compensate for the difference between Europa League money and Champions League money. And, you know, he's not certainly not going to dip his hands into his pockets and do that uh, and make up that difference. So you'd have to assume that if we stay outside of the Champions League for another few years, then Stan Kroenke will probably just lower the budget um, even more. So probably not the answer you wanted to hear but that's my opinion on that um that's how i think it will go and finally the last question comes from st goon on twitter who and this is my favorite and that's why i left this one till last massive thanks for this one and it's simply where's the fucking money gone mate i wish i could answer that question for you um i always give answering questions a go but that is one that truly baffles me and i have no fucking idea um <laughs> so uh, thank you for that and that brings us to the end of this preview show, slightly overshadowed by the disappointing news coming out of the press conference today. So I do apologize for that. I don't want to put a downer on things, but it's something I feel really strongly about, really passionate about, and I had to voice my opinion on. Uh, let me know what you think, whether you agree or disagree. I'm happy to have a sensible debate with anyone. So do tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC. My personal Twitter is at Harry Simi. You can find me there. You can also email us if you prefer chroniclesafc at gmail.com and uh, I know I've mentioned this before in the past kind of let it drop off but we do have a patron page for those of you who wish to support the podcast the podcast will always remain free don't get me wrong that's never going to change uh, but what our patrons do get is priority when asking questions um, and they'll get an extra episode each month of which the content will be decided by them uh, so if you want to head over to patreon.com forward slash chronicles afc check it out have a little read uh, see what the money is for um, and, and what sort of things we're trying to do uh, with it and, and how your support can help us in achieving those things and hopefully improving the show for you guys. Uh, I'll be back on Monday. I've got a few brilliant guests lined up uh, for the West Ham Review Show, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, so until Monday, ciao.